According to Belarusian opposition sources, Belarusian saboteurs successfully attacked a Russian A-50 military surveillance aircraft near Minsk in recent hours. This is a big victory. Franak Vyakorka, the chief political advisor to Belarusian opposition leader Svetlana Tsikhanouskaya, told the Daily Beast that the airplane was very expensive, very rare, and perhaps the most important aircraft of the Russian fleet. In Belarusian history, this is perhaps the most successful act of sabotage by Belarusian partisans and underground resistance. A recent Russian operation in which the A-50 was unusually absent indicates that the aircraft, one of only a few in Russia's fleet, is no longer operational, according to opposition intelligence. We have signs that this aircraft cannot be repaired anymore, and it will not fly anymore, Vyakorka said a claim that has not been independently verified by the Daily Beast. This spy plane wasn't in the air when the Russians launched another attack of Iranian drones last night, so it couldn't be used. The Daily Beast reported that Belarusian opposition representative Valery Kavalusky confirmed the attack was drone-based. The leader of the anti-government group BIPOL, which works with Sikhanouskaya's office, said on Telegram that Belarusians were behind the attack pointing out that the radar and front and center parts of the aircraft were damaged. A Belarusian saboteur has been working to disrupt Russian President Vladimir Putin's war efforts in Ukraine ever since Russian troops first entered Belarus as a staging ground. Belarusian saboteurs attacked rail lines last year to disrupt Russian movements and supplies. Alexander Lukashenko, the Belarusian leader, warning that he would allow Putin to use Belarusian territory as a launch pad for his war in Ukraine, which is now in its second year, coincides with the Russian aircraft attack. Lukashenko has resisted Putin and tried to maintain independence from him at times, but Lukashenko watchers have warned in recent days that Putin is likely choking him off, observing that he seems to no longer have the ability to make decisions on his own. Via Korka told the Daily Beast that the takedown was intended to send a stark message to Russia and Belarus that they are in a very weak position. Russia and Belarus might be forced to wonder whether using Belarus as a staging ground for the war is worth it. The message is also being sent to Russians that Belarus is no longer safe for them. They cannot use Belarusian territory without consequences, Via Korka told the Daily Beast. Because Russian authorities haven't commented on the incident and Belarusian authorities haven't acknowledged the attack, it is likely that they are ashamed of what happened. We see that Lukashenko is panicking, Vyakorka said. There is a sense of embarrassment because it shows how fragile, how naked, the entire defense system is. In a statement, Sekhanouskaya praised the attack. She said she was proud of all Belarusians who continue to resist the Russian hybrid occupation of Belarus and fight for Ukraine's freedom. Your brave actions demonstrate to the world that Belarus stands against imperial aggression. Russia has already begun looking for those involved in the attack, Bipol said on its social media pages, warning Belarusians not to be careless with their digital and social media activities. However, Via Korka told the Daily Beast that the participants are currently in a safe place. The Belarusian opposition told the Daily Beast the attack should serve as a warning that this type of attack will not be the last. According to Via Korka, Russia and Belarus can expect similar disruptions and sabotage in the future. Despite the attack, Via Korka expects many more plans to be submitted by his partisans in the near future. We are looking forward to it. In Belarus, civil resistance against Lukashenko's regime is conducted under the so-called Victory Plan or Pira Moha, which includes acts of sabotage. Throughout history, opposition groups in exile have urged saboteurs to be ready to act at any time. Via Korka cautioned that this attack should not signal armed resistance is imminent. As long as non-violent resistance is the goal, we will stick with it. It is not violent to destroy Russian equipment. The partisans of our party do not harm anyone. Russian equipment is destroyed by them. As Via Korka told the Daily Beast, they stop Russian trains, they hack Russian institutions in an effort to delay and disrupt the war machine. At the moment, the underground resistance is the only and most effective way to delay and disrupt the war machine. Belarusians' efforts to help Ukraine thwart Russia's war continue and extend to many different realms, including hacking, information sharing, and incidents like this, Kavalyevsky told the Daily Beast. 
Belarusians are trying to help Ukrainians in any way they can. According to the opposition, Lukashenko and Putin should not only expect attacks against their military entities, but also espionage and turmoil from within. In recent months, Russian and Belarusian military groups have been training together in Belarus to prepare for combat readiness. Belarus's opposition is working to recruit spies within the Belarusian military to carry out sabotage. Via Korka explained that the opposition is looking for allies within the Belarusian army who will counter Kremlin orders and show disobedience to the Lukashenko administration. Adding that some efforts are already underway to recruit spies, Via Korka stated, we can disrupt their presence and create much discomfort for them. They are already doing it. For Belarusians, the use of Belarusian territory by Russia signals that Lukashenko has become a puppet and that the country is now under Russian control. According to Kavalowski, this is to send a signal that Belarus is essentially under Russian partial occupation and that we need to deoccupy Belarus. There is no doubt that Belarusians are unhappy with Russian military presence in their country and they need to leave. We are reminded here that Belarus and Ukraine's fates are intertwined, Biakorka said. So, what are your thoughts? Do you think Putin and Belarus president got something going on? Let me know in the comments section down below and we promise to read them all. We love hearing from our viewers. Also, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our channel. This will help us reach more people who might be interested in this topic and it will motivate us to create even better videos in the future. Thank you again for your support and we can't wait to hear what you think about this topic. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon.